everybody, it's Michelle, and today I've got for you a beginning slash intermediate level Pilates reformer workout. So it's gonna be a lot of fun, it's gonna be really well balanced, and we're gonna get a lot of good stuff for our arms, our abs, our lower body, uh, and just get a really nice, well-rounded workout. Okay, so we're gonna start on our backs. I've got two red springs on. Have your headrests flat. You're gonna have your feet on hip width apart, heels on the bar, arms by your sides. Okay, so to get started, all I want you to do is start rocking your pelvis back and forth. Yeah, so tucking into an imprint where the low back is closer to the mat and then rocking back to neutral where you have that nice little curve under the low back, yeah? So just start kind of mobilizing through the lumbar spine. <sighs> Very good. All right, now we're gonna turn this action into the start of a hip roll. So we're gonna breathe out, do that initial scooping of the tail. Now I want you to tuck under and roll your hips up into a bridge. So a nice long diagonal, hold it and take an inhale. And then as you exhale, articulate back down through the spine until you find that imprint and then finally neutral. Good, do that a couple more times. So really rolling up in order. So the tail is leaving the mat first and then it returns to the mat last. So good, couple more times. The less the carriage moves underneath you, the better. Yes, so those hamstrings and glutes are nice and connected. If you find that your hamstrings are cramping, you can add on a little extra weight to give them some support. Good, shooting the knees over the toes and then roll through. Okay, let's do this two more times. Such a good way to warm up the spine and the legs Whew. and get us moving. All right, so now roll up into your bridge and stay. Hold here, push strong into the back of the shoulders. Now, all I want you to do is squeeze your knees in towards your midline and then release back to parallel. Do that again. Now the knees don't necessarily need to touch. Yes, all I want you to do is connect to those inner thighs, give them a little squeeze, and then release. And release, so good. Let's do that a couple more times. Keep the height of the hips, almost like you had a ball between your knees and you were squeezing it and releasing it. Good. Now see if you can get your knees all the way to touch and do some little tiny pulses down and up with your hips while keeping that squeeze of your inner thighs. Whew. So good. Couple more times. If your knees don't comfortably touch, you can separate them a little bit. Let's do four more. Whew. Three, two. Now pause at the top, separate to hip width, lift a little higher, and then roll back down to the bottom. Whew. Okay, good, drop side to side a little bit. Whew. Okay, so that got our inner thighs awake for sure. All right, next we're gonna start testing our stability, removing one leg off of the bar, okay? So now roll up into our bridge that we found and stay. And all I want you to do is lower your hips slightly and then lift back up, yeah? So small little pulses, allowing the hips to flex and then extend. So very small, maybe an inch or two in either direction. Three, two, one. Pause at the top and then roll back through the spine to come down. Good, now let's do that again. Roll up and stay. This time, hold your hips high and I want the pulse to be your knees coming into the midline and then apart, in and then apart. So almost pretend like you had a ball between your knees and you're just squeezing it and releasing. So the knees won't actually touch. They just get close. Whew. Two, one, good. Now go back to parallel, lift high, and then roll back down to the mat. Whew. Very good. All right, now roll up again. Whew. Get up to the top and stay. And I want you to do three pulses Whew. in parallel. Whew. And then hold at the top and do three little squeezes on your imaginary ball. Good, and then again, three times lowering and lifting in parallel, and then three times squeezing and releasing. Oh, so good, do that one more time. So lowering and lifting the tail, and then squeezing and releasing in towards center. Good, and then pause hip width, lift higher, and roll all the way down to the mat. So good. All right, shake it out a little bit. 
Okay, next we're gonna add on some challenge by removing our feet one at a time off of the bar. So exhale, we're scooping under, rolling up to the top. Now once you find your bridge, I want you to hold and just see what happens if you remove one foot barely off the bar and then set it back down. Now other side, now this is not a huge lift, just a really small little hover to test out our balance. Now if you can see, kind of peek down at your pelvis, your two pointy hip bones should be staying pretty well level with each other, yes? So when one leg lifts, we don't wanna see the hips dunk down to one side. Now if this ever feels like too much, you can have your hips a little bit lower to get off of that intensity a little bit. Good, now last one lift to your highest bridge, and then roll back down. Whew. Okay, very good. Now, advancing that a little further, we roll up and stay, and we go into a full-on tabletop. So bring the knee over the hip, and then replace. Lift, and then replace. Now again, you could do this with lower hips, or even with your hips all the way down on the carriage, if we need to modify, yes? So that glute of the leg that stays behind really takes over to stabilize and maintain the position of our pelvis. So good. Last time, place the feet down, lift up high, and then roll yourself to the bottom. All right, okay, next level is come through tabletop, end up with a leg straight, and then bend to place it back down. Whew, so a little bit more activity, a little bit more coordination, bend to reach up, bend to return. Whew, lift and lower, and the hips shouldn't change no matter what the legs are doing. Whew. All right, now end up with one leg reaching and hold. Now I want you to roll your spine down to the mat, leaving that leg vertical. Whew, go from imprint to neutral and then place the foot back down. Now roll up with two feet on, lift the other leg at the top and then roll down through the center of the spine. And then release and replace the foot. Good, a few more times. So gravity is kind of helping to drive that head of the femur down into the hip socket as you roll through, yes. So tricky part here, one of many, is to roll through the center of your spine even though the legs are doing different things, yeah? So good, rolling up with two feet, lift one, and then soften down, Whew. So now, reach one leg up at the top. I want you to roll down on that one foot and back up on that same foot. We're gonna do three more. I roll down on the one, up on the one, Whew, so a little more endurance, staying on this leg for even longer. Whew, very nice, now hold up there and stay, and we're gonna do little tiny pulses. Up, up, drive that supporting knee forward. Three, two, one, now stay high, place the heel on the bar, other leg reaches up, and we repeat. I roll down through the middle of my spine, keep the legs how they are, and roll right back up. So good, three more times. Still getting that same articulation, Ooh, even though we're staying on this one side. So good, hold up there and stay and take your little teeny tiny pulses, lift, 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 good. Three, two, one, set the foot down, take one last huge bridge, and then roll yourself all the way down. Awesome. All right, shake your legs out a little bit. Hopefully our legs and our spine are feeling nice and warm. So we're gonna go into some single leg footwork now. Your headrest can come up if that's more comfortable for you. So from this parallel hip width apart position, still on our heels, I want you to lift one leg up to tabletop. Take a breath in, our spine is neutral. Now just straighten your bottom leg and then control the carriage back down. Very good. So now, finally, for the first time today, we're moving the carriage. So kind of test out these springs. If you need to adjust them, you absolutely can. Yes, so that thigh of the tabletop leg is hopefully nice and vertical. Good, you can bring it closer if the hip flexors need a little reprieve. Take it further away to challenge your core muscles. Okay, three more times, like you're stomping that foot bar away from you. Two, 
And last one, very nice. Okay, switch sides, replace the foot. Other leg comes up, breathe out on the press. Inhale on the return, yes. So feeling super active through this bottom leg. We wanna feel the quad really guiding that kneecap up and down. Good, not locking out the knee. So good, let's do three more. Notice if you're holding any tension in the chest or the shoulders, try to let it go. Last one. Ooh, so nice. All right, now we're gonna play around with having our two legs doing two different types of rotation, which is a little tricky, but let's give it a try. So I want you to make a V with your heels. So heels together, toes apart on the foot bar. Now, leave one foot how it is, remove one leg, reach it straight out, and turn it to parallel. So my floating leg is parallel, my foot bar leg is externally rotated. All right, now here we go. We're gonna push out from the bar and then return. Yes, and you're probably gonna have to make little adjustments as we go, because our body is naturally gonna try to bring these two sides to be doing the same thing. So always checking in that your free leg, the kneecap is pointing to the ceiling, and the foot bar leg, the knee is going to the side. Yes. Now, evenly weighted on the back of the pelvis, which is not easy with these two types of rotation. Last one. Good. Now come down and let's switch. So now, take that other leg back to the V, reach your new leg forward to parallel, and then press out and in. Very good. So this bending knee is angling pretty much about out towards the shoulder, about 45 degrees. Yes, so nothing too crazy. Good, really squeeze the thigh so that floating leg is fully straight. Last two. Last one. Oh, very nice. All right, and come all the way down. Okay, so that was confusing enough, but now we're gonna try internal rotation for the pressing leg. So I want you to touch your knees together, have your heels out slightly wider than your knees, and internally rotated. Yeah, so it's gonna feel weird. Kind of pigeon-toed, knock-kneed. Now, same thing. Remove one leg without changing the one that we leave behind. Now let's give it a try. Ready? Push out and then return. Good. You can take a look and make sure they're doing what you think you're, they're doing. Yes, so even though the other knee isn't there, that bending knee should have that same pathway coming in towards center. Good. Make sure the free leg isn't turning in. Its job is to stay parallel. So good. It's almost like rubbing your belly and patting your head, right? Doing those two things simultaneously. Whew. And then come down and rest. Oh, so good. All right, here we go. So we want the heel further out than the knee. Reach your other leg forward. And then we go push and pull. Out. And in, this one's especially hard to keep the weight on the back of that hip of the pressing leg. Three, last two, and last one. Whew, so challenging, good. All right, you guys, shake it out. All right, we're gonna move on to doing some arms and abdominals. So we're gonna do a little mid-back series. I'm gonna keep my two red springs on. That might feel a little heavy for some of us. So feel free to decrease. I think I might do a little happy medium and hold my long loops with the two reds. That should be just about right. You hold whichever loop of yours that you like. All right, so we're gonna lift one leg up at a time to tabletop, reach the arms directly overhead towards the ceiling. Okay, now take a breath in. As you exhale, I just want you to pull the arms straight down next to your hips and then float them back up. Yeah, let's do that again. So just take these first few. It's kind of a tester. See if you like your springs, if you like the loops you've got. If not, go ahead and make the switch now. All right, now you're welcome to leave your head down, but if you wanna increase the ab work, when your arms go forward, you're gonna nod the chin, flex your shoulder blades and head off the mat, and then lay back down. Yes, try to take the same amount of time to flex forward as it takes to return, yeah? So no hurry, try to reach beyond your sitting bones. Whew, let's do that two more times. So really powering through the center, of those abdominals 
Good. Now this time, curl up and stay. Now hold here, and I want you to bend and stretch your elbows one time. Do a tricep press, and then lay down and reach up. Whew. Let's do that again. Except this time, let's do two tricep presses. One and two. Very good. And then lay down and reach up. Whew. Let's do that again. Now you probably guessed it. We're going to do three. So with every rep, we're going to add on one extra tricep press. Very good. And then lay down. We're going to go all the way till we get to six tricep presses. So I'm on my fourth round. Very good. And then we lay down. Now remember, you've got the choice to leave the head down throughout or for some of these presses. Yes, so now we're on our fifth round, hopefully. And then reach up. Here's our final one. Ready? Last time, and we do six presses. So working on that endurance. So good. Three more. Two. Last one. And then lay yourself down. Awesome, you guys. All right, now I want you to reach your arms and legs both straight up to the ceiling. You can bend your knees if that's more comfortable. Now our arms and our legs are gonna do the exact same thing as each other, okay? So my arms and legs are gonna open about 45 degrees to a small V. Now everything's gonna press down and forward. My head lifts, my arms and legs come in, and then reach up to lay back down. So they're essentially drawing a small circle. We open about 45 degrees, press down, my hands come to my hips, my feet touch, and then I lay down and reach up. Good, I open one, I lower and press two, and then I return and lift up three. Now if that's too crazy, don't do the legs. You're welcome to just do that small circle with the upper body, yes? That would be the more challenging version whew, to have those arms and legs staying straight. So good. Now let's reverse it. Pause at the top. We start by pressing down. Let the head lift. Small separation to circle back in. Press forward, little open, and then lay down. So good. Three more. Either just the arms or arms and legs. Two. Very good. Last one and then lay yourself down. Whew. Amazing. All right. So good. So hang your straps up, roll yourself over, and come on up. Ha! Ah, awesome, you guys. All right, we're gonna take uh, our springs down. So we're gonna get to just a single red, one heavy spring. And then we're gonna come up onto our knees and do a little bit of chest expansion, okay? If being on your knees is not your jam, you're welcome to sit down for these, okay? So bring your knees right up against the shoulder blocks. Uh, I'm gonna grab onto my straps with a fist, yeah? The higher up you hold onto the ropes, the tension will increase a little bit, okay? So hips right over knees. So this is gonna be a lot of work keeping our hips stable on top of the thighs. Here we go. Pinky side of the hand is pointing back. Take a breath in and feel the width across your chest. Now just pull your arms in one smooth movement, straight back, and then in front of you. Exhale, and then return. Good, so if you ever feel unstable, just sit your booty down. Yeah, kind of get your, get your bearings again and then lift up. You wanna make sure you go back with your hips rather than sending your torso forward, okay? And slow and steady is the name of the game. No sudden movements, all right? Now, let's do that two more times. So my shoulders and my hips and my knees are staying stacked. So now, press back and hold. Keep your arms there. I want you to look over one shoulder, look to the other shoulder, look back front, and then slowly return the arms. Do that again. Pull back and stay. Hold tension with the arms. Look to the side, to the side, back front, and then return. Yes, so that's an interesting dynamic to hold the tension in one place and then try to relax it in the other. Very good. 
Okay, let's do that two more times. Feel like you get taller the longer you hold those arms back. Try not to get shortened up. Last time, look side to side, look to the front, and then release. Whew, so good. All right, now we're gonna do some pulses, which is super challenging here. So sit down if you feel more comfortable. Here we go. We're gonna do full range, pull the arms back. Now release till the hands line up with your hips and then do three little micro presses back. Two, one, and then return all the way front. Whew. Good, do that again. Make sure the knees don't go jutting out in front of you. Keep them under your hips. Three, two, get taller on each pulse, one, and then release. Good, two more times. Hold lower down towards the end of the strap if it's feeling too heavy. And then return. So good, one last time. So much work for the back of the shoulder and the arms. Three, two, one, and then go ahead and relax. Oh, amazing, you guys. All right, now hold on to the loops. I'm gonna hold my shorter ones and we're gonna do some bicep curls, okay? So I'm gonna have the arms out in front of us. The higher the elbows, the more challenging this is. So we're gonna do a bicep curl and also a hinge. Are we ready? If the hinge is too much, you don't have to do it. So we're gonna bend the elbows, keep your spine flat like a board, and just lean back off of your knees, extend the arms, and come back up. Good, so tons of work for those thighs in this length and kind of contraction, which is kind of cool, right? A lot of times we work on more of a shortening contraction for the thighs, so it's good to get a nice long, good. So you want your booty to stay up away from your heels. Good, keep the distance between the ribs and the hips the same. No arching through the low back, last two. Good, push into the tops of the feet to bring you up, one, Ooh, and then sit up and relax. Oh, so good. All right, next, last thing here, we're gonna scoot back a little bit. So your feet are gonna hang off the carriage. I've got my ankles right on the edge, okay? So now, come up tall. We're gonna do a bit of a vertical ab curl of sorts, okay? So the arms are gonna press straight back. As they do, I'm gonna flex my hips slightly, round my spine, and almost try to look upside down through my knees, and then slowly restack to where we started. Good, let's do that again. And then lift. So your hips do have to sit back. Yeah, you can't do this if the hips stay put. They sit back to the heels slightly. The arms get way behind you and then lift. Yeah, the arms probably end up about the height of the shoulders. And then up, so good. A few more times, push the shins heavy into the carriage and go as slowly as you need to, to feel stable here. All right, let's do that three more times. And then lift, really feel that compression of the abdominals, up and in. Whew. All right, one last challenge. Get down there and stay. Bend and stretch your elbows while holding this position. Whew. You can kind of hook your feet around the edge of the carriage if that makes you feel more secure. But the key is to go slowly here. Yes, if you jerk the carriage around, it's not very good in this unstable position. Last two, abs draw back, last one. Ooh, and then bring yourself up. Oh, so nice, feels kind of good to get upside down. All right, hang your straps up, leave your springs the same, and then we're gonna come into a sideline position, but we're gonna be propped up on our elbow. So take your forearm behind the shoulder rests, across the head rests, to support you, okay? If that feels like too much, you're welcome to grab some head support and lay on your side instead, okay? Being up on your elbow is a little more activity for the bottom side. So once your elbow is down, I want you to take the strap that's in front of you and you're gonna hook it over your top foot. If you need to use your bottom foot to push you out a little bit, it's not a bad idea. 
All right, so bottom knees bent. If you have a handlebar on the back of your shoulder rest, you can hold that if that's comfortable. Okay, so top knee is parallel. Ribs are drawing up. If you get tired, you can set your ribs on the shoulder rest, okay? But don't do it unless you really need it. So here we go, connected to that underarm. We're just gonna straighten the leg and then bend it. Nice and easy. So your trick is to send your foot to kind of the front corner of your foot bar. Yeah, you'll notice pretty fast. If you send your foot too far back, the rope is gonna get too close to your body, all right? So the knee, the hip, and the ankle are trying to stay in one line, level with each other. Good. So we're constantly drawing this bottom side of the waist up away from the floor. Very good. Now, pause with the leg straight, and I want you to sweep your straight leg forward, whew, and then back. Good. So the goal is to try not to lose that nice neutral curve in the low back. Okay, so only reach the foot as far as you can without tucking your tail under. Ooh, that's not easy. Tons of work for these outer thighs and the glutes. All right, now pause with your leg down, internally rotate, and I'm gonna bend, knock my knees together, and then kick the heel up very slightly, okay? You don't want this some crazy angle with your foot looking up at the ceiling. It's just a very small, internal rotation. Good, if you're getting tired, you can rest the ribs on that shoulder rest or lay your head all the way on the headrest. So good, you guys, two more. Whew. Last one. Whew. All right, bend your knees and rest for a second and grab the rope. Whew, that's a lot of work. All right, one last set. We're gonna do some small circles and then we'll do this all on the other side, all right? So kick your leg away, ribs up or down, whatever you can handle. Now just trace some little circles, aiming at that front corner of the foot bar. If you can make a bigger circle, you go for it. I'm keeping mine small to medium. Whew. Now go the other way, circle back to front. You can hold the rope if you need some support for the leg. Last two, last one. Okay, just sweep the foot off the front of your machine. Let it kind of pull your leg up and take a little stretch for your hip. Wow, those don't take a lot to feel that one. Oh. All right, slip your foot out and we'll do that on the other side. So you choose if being propped up on your elbow was working for you, great. Or you can come down to lie on your side. All right, so use your bottom foot to push you out. Hook the top foot in. <sighs> okay, so you wanna have enough room in front of you that this bottom thigh can be fully supported. Okay, now we just start stomping the heel down and then up. Yeah, so the glutes and the hamstrings really send the foot down, and then the outer thigh is really working to keep the height of the leg. Good, spine nice and long. You can hold the shoulder rests or wherever you need to, to feel stable. All right, now pause with a long leg and you're gonna swing the leg forward and then brush back. Swing it forward and then brush back. Good, you send the leg as far as you're able. You can go as far as having it line up with your hip. Yeah, do that a few more times. Sweep and then pull. And you can grab the rope to give your leg a little bit of support at any time. All right, now pause at the bottom. Turn your toes to the floor and you're gonna internally rotate and then kick up. Knees tap together and then away together and then away so good so your heel ends up higher than your knee just slightly when the leg is long too Whew. last one okay grab the rope and rest oh my goodness all right last one little circles here we go kick the leg down and then we go so these can be as little or as big as you'd like I'm going for small to medium, kind of dinner plate size maybe. Whew. Now go the other way, almost done. Circle, I'm grabbing the rope. So you, you grab the rope if you need to. Two, one, now sweep the foot forward. Oh, and then stretch out the hip. Wow. Oh, 
so good, you guys. Oh, those are not easy. All right, hang your strap up. Ah, okay, next we're gonna face the foot bar, kneel down, tuck your toes under, and I want you to put your hands together on the center of the bar, okay? So wrap all your 10 fingers around, and then elbows are gonna angle just slightly wider than your rib cage. So it's kind of a narrow tricep push up. If that doesn't feel good, separate your hands as much as you need to, okay? But I'm gonna put mine all the way together with my thumbs over top of the bar, okay? Now, chest over the hands, hips open, and we're gonna do some push ups here, dropping the chest down and then push away. Lower and then lift. Now, if it feels better for you to put your thumbs under the bar for this one, you can absolutely do that. You just get wherever feels best for your wrists, okay? Hands close if you can, spread them out if you need to. All right, now adding on to this, once we bend the elbows, we're gonna push away into a long kind of Superman position and then pull ourselves forward with long arms. Do that again. I bend, I push out, and then I pull. Whew, so good. Try not to droop the head towards the floor. Leave the neck in line with the rest of your spine. So good. Two more times. Leave the glutes connected the whole time. Whew. Last one. Now we're gonna reverse it. So now we push out with straight arms, go as far as you can, bend and pull the body over the bar and push up. Whew. One, pull two, push three. So good. One, in and then up. So good. Last two, out, in and up. Last one. All right, you guys, sit back, separate your hands, and drop your chest towards the floor. Whew. So good. All right, let's take a little stretch, and then we'll be done. So climb off to one side for a little single thigh stretch. So your carriage knee will be down, your inside hand will be on the bar, your outside arm will be reaching forward with your palm up, okay? So now, really connecting to the abdominals is important here. We're gonna sink into our stretch. As we do, you're gonna open that long arm and twist back and look at it. Now, if the abs aren't staying connected, the chest is gonna get too close to the legs and we're gonna lose control. And then return and come up. Yeah. So keep the abs nice and contained. Only twist as far as you can go without relaxing through the core. Yeah, so it's a really active, dynamic stretch. We're not just sinking and holding. Good, let's do that two more times. So this back glute is really the driver. Push, 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 pushing. Last one. All right, you guys, walk over or crawl over to the other side. So one foot back, one foot down, outside hand is forward. Ready, we stretch down, swing the arm back to twist, and then reach it back forward. Good, yes, yeah, so your torso wants to stay away from that front thigh. Good, couple more times. So you're more vertical than horizontal. Yeah, in your torso. Very good, last one. Let your gaze follow that moving arm. All right, you guys, so good. Thank you for joining me for that intermediate workout. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, please give it a like below. Leave me a comment if you have any feedback or requests for future videos. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and share this video with a friend. And I'll see you next time. Thank you, bye.